there are a good number of similarities in the way the dead are handled in all cultures. Um, the body has to be interred, it has to be prepared for uh, last viewing by grieving relatives. Uh, a lot of these tasks in our own cultures are undertaken by professional undertakers. Um, in rather poor village conditions in West Africa, you find that people do their own undertaking. So uh, that falls to the family and often in a Sierra Leonean village there's a tradition that says that women wash the bodies of women and prepare them for burial and men wash the bodies of men. Um, this is really just to prepare the corpse so that it can be wrapped in a, a burial cloth and sometimes it's placed in a coffin and there can be a last viewing by the, the family. Um, but that washing is a universal element, you'll find it in all cultures. The other universal element is that there will be some kind of ceremony um, at, at the interment of the body. Uh, the grieving relatives will gather round and follow the body to the grave. Part of that is a witness, to know where the body has been placed, to know that that is the end of that person's life. It's very important for relatives in all cultures to know where the body is and where it's been interred. When somebody dies, my neighbor is there, it's an open place. So if you know me that uh, my son, when somebody, uh, my brother is dead, you come and sympathize with me. And if I, it's uh, tit for tat in Korea, we say it's tit for tat. You do for me, I will do it for you. So if somebody dies, you go there, you empathize and so forth. And you even go to the bereaved person so that the bereaved person will see you. You can go and hand to hands, you touch their hand, he cries on you and so forth. We cry together, we rarely cry because you know how I feel. You empathize with me, the touching of each other, holding my hand, your tears coming on my own tears. Then me be bereaved, I will even touch you. I say, don't cry. Let's forget, the Lord will give that person the rest. So you see the, 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 the body movement, the body touching and so forth, the sharing of tears and so forth. And in fact, if you've done me good, and I know that you are sick, you are dead, you've not been washed, I will try to be there, if I have the means to be there, to take part in your washing, so that I to say farewell. Well, because of the Ebola now, is, I think people will have to change a way of breathing now. But before, touching is, is very important. So the question arises um, why people will continue to uh, carry out their uh, burial practices. And I think that follows from what Esther has been saying, that um, a funeral is a very important moment to express solidarity with the, both with the dead and with the, the living. Um, these are very big events because society is so very important in Sierra Leone. The people closest to the dying person have been very much involved in nursing them. So the possibility is that they are themselves already infected and developing Ebola. So then there's a great deal of touching of the living of funerals. It's not so much the, the, the touching of the body, I think, which is the um, issue, though there are issues to do with preparing a corpse so that it's presentable and clean and so on, and that falls on the members of the family to do that. Um, but the sympathizers at a funeral are then closely in body contact with the bereaved person, and that's been explained. It's to do with encouraging them to um, not feel the, the, the loss uh, too keenly so that they would do something to damage their lives or whatever. So you're often holding people, you're comforting them, and that, the, the tears are literally mingling. And it could be that if people are already infected with Ebola, they're becoming infectious at a funeral. And I think it's an open question whether it's actually touching the body or touching the living that is the, the issue here. People are changing their practices because they know how dangerous a disease Ebola is. But it's, it's a question of how quickly they can change and in what respects they change. And there are some parts of funerals that are not really negotiable. Um, a funeral is a moment of witness. People have to go to the grave to see the body interred. Um, okay, you can do that in different ways. You can follow closely or you can follow at a greater distance. Um, Ebola burial teams are often very rapid in what they do because this is an emergency. They fear the disease themselves. And funerals need to be slow. People 
don't want to feel rushed in a funeral. So they have to observe and they have to respectfully follow the corpse to the place it's interred. And I think these are the things that are the points where, shall we say, um, people are digging their heels in, not around the defense of some obscure uh, ritual practice, but over the, the speed and pacing of a funeral and how well it's done according to notions of human decency. You can't go to Sierra Leone and say, OK, we have uh, a set of rules about how you can carry out a safe burial and you must follow those rules. Um, I think what you can do is you can explain what the transmission pathways are. You can explain that there's a very high virus load on the sick person. Body washing is going to be uh, a dangerous moment. Um, you can explain that touching the corpse may also be highly infectious. And then you say, now, what can we do to help you to reduce that risk? Um, I don't think anyone would object to wearing some safety equipment to do corpse washing. What they would object to is not washing the corpse. Um, that would be deeply disrespectful. Um, and as Esther has already said, that if you've been, uh, um, in some way, if you're loyal to that person because they've helped you in your life, you will actually struggle to take part in the washing if you possibly can, because it's one of those chores that shows the, the respect that you have and the gratitude you have to that dead person. So you have to get local ideas about how protection can be um, improved mm -hmm. in those difficult uh, moments. Well, cremation um, is going to be looked at very negatively. Um, it's a, a complicated question to say why people would be so negative about cremation, um, but it's to do with their ideas of the spirit um, and the transition of the body into a spiritual existence. The body needs to be placed, it needs to be in a place where um, future ceremonies can be carried out, where libations can be poured, because the living need to communicate with the dead. Um, the living need to know that the dead are living in peace. Um, and so the grave is a very important place where you articulate that relationship over a long period. Mm -hmm. uh, what cremation was proposing, at least in Liberia, was that this would become the norm for all Ebola victims. So if we're talking about 10,000 bodies in West Africa that have been cremated and put in, perhaps even in mass graves, this, this really challenges people's notions of what is good and fitting.